Hi. Hello, it's Robert here. How are you? I am just fine. How are you tonight? Um, well, I'm not terribly well. I am, I'm waiting for some medication from the doctor. I've had a four hours sleep. I've woken up. So I'm probably going to be spending the rest of the night awake. There's lots of noise in the background. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm in the car. And, oh, uh, yeah, sure. My wife has the door open and the, sure. the, the, it's beeping because the door's open and people are talking and uh, that's, you know. Yeah, sure. But it's all right. We're, we're actually, we're out in the country here and we're getting ready to leave right now to Tell him we might get hit, hit back home so yeah sure uh, yeah you can you can go ahead um okay um so you want to discuss the bible now you're kind of are you prepared or well i i try to always be prepared uh you know you know bible says just an in season out of season and uh okay so, uh, i don't i can't uh promise amazing things here but I'll certainly by the grace of God give it a give it a try um is it true that oneness Pentecostals believe that the father is the deity of Jesus and the son is the flesh the humanity of Jesus is that correct uh, the uh, son is yeah I'm glad that you did not use only the word flesh because some people do, and uh, when they describe the sun, and um, that's not best. I, I, I like uh, humanity. How do you explain John 17, 1? I'll read the verse. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son may also glorify you. The word father and son is used in this text. The son is praying to the father. Could you explain that? Who is the father and who or what is the son? Please. Well, of course, the, the, yeah. The, the father, of course, is God Almighty. Um, you know, uh, Peter said that when they he was in the Mount of Transfiguration, he heard the voice of God the Father uh, from the excellent glory, most excellent glory, speaking and saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. And so he's talking about uh, the Father when he says God. S sorry. Could, and, uh, or he's talking about God when he says the Father. And I might also add that the writer of Hebrews, whoever that was, uh, he, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, uh called God Almighty the uh, the invisible spirit. Sorry, uh, sorry, please. I, I, am, I must God. insist. I must insist. If, if, I, if I ask a question, you don't have to answer it. But please don't treat me as if I'm a fool and give me the runaround. I asked a specific question. I read John 17, 1, and I asked you to explain who is the Father and who is the Son. And you're not even attempting to do that. I'll read the verse again. Well, actually, actually, no, no, excuse me. <laughs> Mr. Skinner, what's your first name? Robert, Robert, hi. Robert, is it all right if I call you Rob? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, and you can call me too, that's, that's my first name. Uh, but you are dead wrong in what you just said. Uh, your, your question was, if I remember right... Uh, you how can saying, a question be dead wrong? I'm asking you a question. I'm asking you to explain your beliefs. No, I mean your, your statement. I don't know if I said question or not, but your statement you just made about me avoiding uh, your original question. Could I repeat you the know, question? I, I'm, I'm, could, I, could... I'm not. I'm actually I'm not doing that. I'm trying to explain to you my uh, belief of who the father is. I didn't ask you uh, that. Please. I did not ask you that. You didn't listen to me. I asked oh, you, I, I, I read John 17, 1, and I asked you to explain. Let me read it again. Je Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. Now, I asked you to explain two things, not one thing. I don't need you to give me a lesson on who God the Father is. Everyone believes God the Father is Yahweh God Almighty. 
Unitarians, Christadelphians, Trinitarians, Oneness Pentecostals, Jehovah's Witnesses will all claim the Father is the Almighty God. I know that. Yeah. Who it's is the Son who's, who's praying? Who, who is the Son who's praying to the Father? Could you please explain this Father-Son relationship in John seventeen one, sir? Thank you. Well, the Father, if if I may say it again, with without you cutting me off, uh, I mean I need to say this in order for me to answer your question. So, so I, I was not trying to avoid your question. Or, or treat you like a, what you say, like a fool. Uh, I, I wasn't meaning that uh, in, in any way rude. Um, the Father is God Almighty. He is the eternal spirit. He is the invisible spirit. But yet Jesus is the visible manifestation of God Almighty. And, and uh, Jesus, the man, Christ Jesus, as Paul calls him, uh, is the son and the relationship is that it was the humanity expressing himself to the deity but i do not believe that the humanity or you used the word flesh a little while ago the humanity or the flesh is a separate Person I never said that. Please, please. I, I never, I never said that. I never said the the father and son are separate persons. I never said that. So please don't well, put no, words no, in my no, mouth. No, That's no, not no, fair no, on no, me. Well, well, I mean, you, you never said that in our conversation here tonight. But you did say it. no, sir. Uh, no, sir. I have never said that. I do not believe I that. Should, and I'm not actually, going to defend something that I don't believe and which I haven't said. Well, actually, you did say it. Where? where and, when? And when? Give me well, a reference. I can assure you I didn't. I said they are distinct persons. I think the problem is you don't listen. If, um, you know, on your Facebook page, uh, on your profile, the very first thing you say is, I am a Trinitarian. Yes, sir. The definition of the Trinity is... God in three persons of equal majesty. And so if you are a typical Trinitarian, as you claim to be, then you do believe that the Father and the Son are separate. Persons. No, sir, I don't. No Trinitarian creed has ever stated that. They all the, the state Father, that the, they are the, distinct. The council of, no, the, the Council of... Uh, of uh, Chalcedon, 380 AD. It's not 380 AD. Chal C C Chalcedon was, I think, 451 AD. Or 453. 4453, four, I think. What, what council are you talking about? Um, Chalcedon? Chalcedon? Chalcedon, I think, was 453, wasn't it? Mm. It well, was Constantinople. Well, it was Constantinople that was 381. And the first well, point of Constantinople talking. refuted modalism. But but we're, we're sort of going from topic to topic to topic. We're changing. You still haven't explained. Who is the son in John 17, 1, who's praying to the father? You used the word well, Jesus, which what... wasn't my question. I asked you about son, although you did use the word well, son once, but it was kind of vague. Yeah. Um, um, I would, <laughs> every time I've started to answer your question... You've cut me off. Uh, maybe you don't mean to do that, but that's what you're doing. Uh, you have to understand me. Uh, I like to be scholarly when I study the Bible and preach and teach. Therefore, I like to explain myself very clearly, and it takes uh, a little bit of time sometimes to do that. I, I'm not trying to be laborious or anything. Uh, but I was simply trying to explain the relationship of the Father to the Son, which is relevant to your question. So at John seventeen one, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may also glorify you. Who is the Son here who's praying to the Father? I know you believe the Father's the deity, but, sir, and I'm sorry for, for cutting you off, but 
if you say something I don't believe, I'm going to cut you off because I don't believe father and son are separate. Who is the son here? Could, could you please explain that, please? The son is the flesh. It is the humanity of God. He is the, the son is the word made flesh. Right, so if the humanity, sir, is the son at John 17, 1, at John 17, 5, this same son still addresses the father, and he says that he has eternally existed together with the father from before the creation. It, um, John 17, 5, And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory I had with you before the world was. Surely that doesn't fit your explanation that the son is the flesh. I can hear a lot of noise in the background. Well, the, the reason you do, I, I live out in the country here, and I live on a gravel road, and it's bouncing up and down yeah. <laughs> while I'm driving, while I'm going down the road, and there's a lot of gravel noises and yes. thumps and bumps, and yeah. uh, you might hear my voice shaking even. Oh, okay, okay, sir. Uh, you, uh, but back to what I was saying, um, the, the line... The last statement you just made about John seventeen five. would you please make that statement again? Yes, sir. Um, the verse says, And now, O Father, glorify me, together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you, with, with is para in Greek, um, with you before the world was. So it's saying that the Son has existed together with the Father, from before the creation, he was with Para, the father. Um, so the son cannot be the flesh, because the flesh was created in Mary's womb. Uh, the um, Logos is speaking. I mean, the Logos became flesh. And before the Logos became flesh, the Logos was not the son that was born of the womb of Mary. The Logos was none other than God himself. As uh, the last statement of John 1.1 1, 1 in the Greek clearly uh, affirms. So you're saying that in John 17.5, the Father, who the Logos is the Father, and the Father is saying, O oh, Father, I am the Father, glorify me, the Father, which I had with you, the Father, before the world was. So the father's pr praying to himself. Is that what you're saying? The, the, the word, you know, back in eternity past, um, the word was not a separate, intelligent being from God. Uh, agreed. I, I, I am, I am not a tritheist. Himself. I'm a Trinitarian. I do not believe they are separate. I believe they're distinct. Um, Sorry to cut you off there, but I don't, I don't, I, I will not defend the belief that father and son are separate. That's contrary to the Trinitarian creeds, tr contrary to the Trinitarian faith. No educated no, Trinitarian no, no, beliefs. You know, somewhere, somewhere or another, we are not quite on the same historical or theological page here, because that is. No, it's not. not. Prove it. Prove it. History. Prove it. Show me where educated Trinitarians believe in three separate persons. The council that happened in 380 that I made mention it's, to... Constantinople is 381, and the first point of the Council of Constantinople condemned vigorously modalism, the idea that Jesus is the Father. It doesn't say that they, there's no Trinitarian creed that says that Father, Son and Holy Spirit are three separate persons. Um, so are you saying that the, 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 the word is the father himself? I mean, you're wrong. Well, I, look, no, it's uh, up to you to give evidence. If, if, if you want to make a statement, you have to give evidence to prove that that statement. Otherwise, I can just ignore it. Um, are you saying that the Logos, I'm trying to understand what you mean by the Logos. Are you saying the Logos is God the Father? Because in I John 1.1, 1, 1, the Logos is with God. He's with the Father. The, well, the, you know, the word Logos, the Greek word Logos means word, just like the King James translators rendered it. And it means something spoken, 
But it means, uh, here, here's a, a, a nuance that must not be ignored in the logos. Uh, the word logos means the word plus the thought, plus the thought behind the word. Uh, so in other words, when I'm speaking to you right now, I am speaking words. And the words that I am speaking are my thoughts made manifest and and my word is an extension of myself you might say and so that's the relationship of god the father and jesus is that the, the father is logos and logos became flesh which he was not originally and that is that's the man christ jesus um, no scholar says at John 1 1 that Logos means thought. And you did say the Logos was that, the that Father. Means, no, wait a minute, you're wrong. You're wrong about that. Well, name a scholar. Um, name a scholar and give the reference. Joseph Henry Thayer, in his Greek uh, English lexicon, which is a very authoritative lexicon, and it's also based on the received text of the New Testament, which I lean toward uh he he says that no he doesn't he doesn't say it means that at john 1 1 all words have a range of meaning thayer who was a unitarian does not say that at john 1 1 logos means a thought in god's mind there is no greek scholar in 2000 years with a phd in greek who said that i, I mean you, uh, you can't well, just make stuff up you well, have well, to well, give no, a no, reference no, no wait a minute joseph henry thayer doesn't say that, then you please tell me what he said. Do you have his lexicon in front of you? I don't have it in front of me. Um, unfortunately, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to dig well, it up. How can you insist that he did not say that? Because I've read Thayer's lexicon, and Thayer gives a range of meaning. And at John 1-1, well, Thayer, who was, Thayer who was a Unitarian, agrees... Thayer, who was a Unitarian, agrees at John 1-1 one, one, that... Um, logos does not mean a thought in God's mind. I mean, look, if if the what you said the logos, the word, is is a thought in God's mind. It, I mean, have I heard you right, or am I misunderstanding you? Well, I think you might be misunderstanding slightly, because I am not saying that the logos is only a thought in God's mind. Uh, it is the divine expression produced by the thought. So it includes both <laughs> the divine expression and the thought behind it. You use the pronoun it twice. So you believe that the Logos is impersonal. The Logos is not a he. The Logos is an impersonal No, it. No, no. I, I, w I was talking about uh, the, the, the discussion, the definition that is produced uh, from from the Greek lexicon uh, that, that it's uh, you know it means the thought behind the word and the word itself. I it would, also means the divine expression. I, I would suggest, sir, that we speak again, not when you're in your car, but in your desk. Let's both have Thea's lexicon in front of us, and let's both both look at it at the same time. Because we have to prove stuff. It's no good just saying stuff off the top of our head. Um, you did say the Logos was an it twice. So I believe the Logos is a he. Do, do you believe the Logos is personal, a he? Or do you believe the Logos is impersonal in it? Uh, I, I'd say that both the pronoun he and the pronoun it in the proper context could both accurately be described or applied to the logos and no one's ever said that in church history i've never come across that i'm 62 years old i've i've never heard anyone say that in almost 40 years that the logos is both an it and a he i mean i, I feel you're making stuff up well, can, can you prove if, this to me uh, from the bible prove to me from the bible that the logos is both an it and a he because you've got a problem either way. If you say uh, the Logos... Well, you, because, because Logos means word. Okay? And a word is a thing. 
and things can often be uh, referred to with the pronoun it. That's just good English. Um, people aren't referred to by the pronoun it. Neither is God Almighty. God Almighty is always referred to as a he, because God is personal, yeah, not, not impersonal. That, that, that's fine. But right now we are talking about the word, and a word can be referred to as it. Yes, 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 that, ab ab absol not, absolutely, absolutely, no. absolutely. If if um, my parrot says a word, that word, I don't have a parrot anymore, but if my parrot says his name's Sammy, that word Sammy is an impersonal it, the word that the parrot speaks. The words that I speak are impersonal, the words that you speak are impersonal. The, in John 1, the word Logos, word, is not impersonal. Because it refers to God Almighty himself. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the Word was God himself. And yet the Word is also that, with that's God. The proper, that's the proper nuance. Um, could we, I, I suggest we, we, we speak again, and maybe when you're at a table and we've got Thayer's lexicon in, in front of us. Could I ask you on a totally different topic? Who was sure. sent into this world? Was it no the problem. Father or the Son, if that's possible, sir? Uh, the, the Son. So the Son was sent into this world by the Father at the Incarnation. Well, you know, uh, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That, that's ascending in itself. Um, I would agree the Son was sent into the world. Uh, most oneless Pentecostals have insisted to me that it was the uh, Father who came into the world, not the Son. Um, so if the Father sent the Son into the world... Well, well, me... now, if a oneless Pentecostal told you that, they were either unaware of their own doctrine, and, and <laughs> to tell you the truth, sometimes they are, um, or, or they just were not thinking clearly. So, if the Father sent the Son... In... That's not... One is Pentecostals have no problem with saying that the Son was sent into the world. Right, but that means the Son existed before the Incarnation as the Son. In, in, in the mind of God, in the plan of God. What do you mean? In, in God the... who calls things that are not... As sorry, as sorry, as what, what, do you, what do you... Again, this is double world. talk. What do you mean? The Bible says, talk. Look, let, let, me, talk. Let, let, let me read 1 John chapter 4, verse 9 to 14. It proves that the Son existed together with the Father, and then the Father sent the Son into the world. Um, it, it does not prove that the, that the Son existed uh, with the Father before he was sent into the world. Then how can the Father send somebody who doesn't exist into the world? Because whenever uh, a preacher is called of God to preach and, he, and God anoints him and God says, you go preach, God is sending that preacher at that time. And so um, God sent his son. Uh, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. Uh, it might be par as there too. When you say God was, I'm when you say sure. God was with him, you mean that God is somebody other than the Son. Otherwise, um, you've got two, two, it, two it, fathers. It, it, okay, okay. <laughs> no, no. Listen. Yes, my answer to that is yes, but not yes in the sense of him being a separate. Person, I don't believe or, that I don't believe Father and Son are separate. All the Trinitarian creeds, right, for over fifteen hundred years, have stated that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are distinct. None of them state they are separate. The fourth point of the Athanasian Creed says, "quote Not dividing the substance." So the substance of God is not divided. They are not separate. They are distinct. But, distinct but means it, you can distinguish Chalcedon, between them. At Chalcedon. The division between the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost became more distinct. And that is the official 
definition of the Trinity used by the Roman Catholic Church today, by the way. Actually, no, it's no, it's not, because Chalcedon had an error in it. They taught monothelitism, which was, was that Christ had only one mind and one will. That, that Christ's deity and his humanity shared a single common mind and a single common will. That was found to be erroneous, and Pope Honorius, the only pope ever to be... Um, uh, labelled as a heretic, was excommunicated from the Catholic Church for teaching uh, Chalcedon. And about 150 years after Chalcedon, I forget the name of the church council, uh, Chalcedon was um, amended um, to um, exclude the monothelitism error. Look, um, I'm only interested in one thing at a time. Who came down from heaven? You said the sun was a thought in God's mind. So a thought right. is something that's impersonal. A thought is not a he. A thought is an it, surely. Uh, I never said that the sun uh, was only a thought. I said that the definition of logos is word in, or divine expression, including the thought behind the word or the expression so jesus was not just a thought he was the expression he was the coming forth in invisible tangible uh, reality of the thought um john three thirteen, no one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven that is the Son of Man. And then there's a textual variant I'm reading from the New King James Version, which says, who is in heaven? Uh, that last phrase, who is in heaven, isn't in the more reliable Greek text. It says... I, I strongly disagree with that. Well, I don't... That's just, that's, that's, that's I'm, really I'm not here to correct. discuss the King... I'm not here to discuss the King James Bible. I'm reading from the King James Bible. Um, it, I'm quite happy to go along with your belief that that is in the text. Um, it says, no one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man, who is in heaven. Which is in heaven. Which, who, who is in heaven. That's what goes on to say. Yeah. So, the Son of Man came down from heaven. The Father sent the Son into the world. And he's in the world in John chapter yeah. 3, but at the same time, he's also in heaven as the Son. Yes, which is uh, a passage that I was in preaching from just not long ago uh one of my favorite passages to establish the doctrine of oneness how do you explain do you agree the son of man came down from heaven he wasn't created on uh, this earth the son of man came from heaven where he existed before his incarnation and he came down to this earth it doesn't say Jesus, so you can't say this is a reference to the Father coming down. It says Son of Man, and at the same time that the Son of Man is here on earth, the text also says he's in heaven at the same time. And that's not the Father part of Jesus, according to oneness theology in heaven. It says Son of Man. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. So the Son of Man came down from heaven, he existed with the Father, before the incarnation, the Father then sent him into the world. Only, only in the mind. He did not exist as a separate. I don't believe they're separate. Or... Please, I do not believe Father and Son are separate. That's not Trinitarian. That's Tritheist. I'm a Trinitarian. Please, please stop trying to get me to defend something that is not my belief. The word distinct means you can distinguish between them. Father, Son and Holy Spirit are personal. Father, Son and Holy Spirit are eternal. And Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are distinct, which means you can well, distinguish so between sorry, them, yeah. and you can eternally and personally distinguish between them. Yeah, they are distinct what? Um, well, the Bible uses the pronouns he of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or if you, if you prefer Son or Logos, these are referred to as he, never as an it. The Father is a he, not an it. The Son is a he, not an it. The Holy Spirit is a he, not an it. All right? I speak to Jehovah's Witnesses. Father plus an it. Pardon? But both, both pronouns can be used 
to describe the father in the son. Pro- prove it. Prove it. Or, show. Prove it. Show me where the, the pronoun it is used in the Bible of the father. The, the the angel says to Mary that holy thing that shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So there, the sons referred to as a that and as a thing, not as a person uh, that's just old english language from the king james bible it doesn't mean the son is an impersonal it could you address john thirteen three? can we agree the son came down from heaven yeah but, but wait a minute i mean i'll discuss that but yeah I, you, you are you're, you're hurrying me through uh, the point that i was already making and we, we, we need to linger on it longer it, it's uh, best to make one point. If you make multiple points, I won't be able to follow you. It's best to make one single point. Then we can have a better well, well, discussion. Well, you, well you, you, brought up, you brought up the point about uh, the, the not calling the father and the or the son and it. And so I'm responding to what you said. And uh, the, the English can, in the, and I said this before, in the right context, refer to the son as an it. Um, hold on, hold on. Um, um, there are numerous instances in the English language where son is impersonal. So, um, I don't know. Um, George Best was a famous soccer player. And if a, new, a young soccer player comes along, you could say he is the son of George Best. Not meaning he's the literal physical son of George Best, but he's a good soccer player like George Best. Um, You could say, you know, if you find a very loving, kind person, you could say that person is a son of goodness or a son of kindness. Um, So in that context, the word son would be impersonal. When you're dealing with scripture, every time that father, son and Holy Spirit are used, the implication is that the father is a he, not an it. The son is a he, not an it. The Holy Spirit is a he, not an it. Because, you're, you're, you're because God Almighty is God Almighty is not an impersonal it. Electricity no, is isn't. an it. The wind I, I, is an I'm it. I'm not saying that he is. Um, he is not impersonal. Right. Okay. Um, we, we, uh, we, uh, we, we, uh, we agree. How would you explain... That the Son of Man came down from heaven. John John thirteen three. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. C- can we agree that the Son of Man came down from heaven? Oh, absolutely. So the Son of Man existed together with the Father in heaven. We read that in John seventeen five. Before he no 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 we we, we did we did not read that in John seventeen five. Okay, let's go there. Um, it was the glory that I had with thee before the world was. Uh, and then he also said, glorify me with thine own self. Which verse? So, um, part, I think that's 17.5, I, but I don't have my Bible in front of me. Right. Uh, glorify me with thine own self with the glory that I had with thee before the world was. Uh, what is the glory that, that, that Jesus had with the Father? He had the father's own self. Uh, he, he, in other words, he was saying there that I am, that I am God, that I am him. But and how, how do you explain the word earth, para? And I assumed that humanity. How do you explain the word para with? Um, I'll read the verse. I think it would be better for us to speak when you're not in your car, but when you're home and you've got a Bible in front of you and Thea's in front of you. Wouldn't that be the better way to discuss scripture? Uh, well, I mean, I would not object to that, but I'm having uh, a good time right okay. now in my car talking to you. And uh, so, I mean... Okay, um, well, in John seventeen one, the Son is speaking to the Father. Let me prove that. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that your Son may glorify you. So the speaker is the Son. We, we agree. And he's speaking to the Father in John seventeen one. 
Um, the context is still the son who identifies himself as I in John 17, 4. I have glorified you. The I refers to the son, the you refers to the father. I have glorified you on the earth. I, that's the son, have finished the work which you, that's the father, has given me to do. Uh, agreed? It's still father praying to the son. So, sorry, I beg your pardon. I'm tired. Um, I've only just woken up because I'm not well at the moment. I made a mistake there. It's the son praying to the father. I'm, I'm sorry. I do beg your pardon. Well, yeah, no problem. Uh, I um, define at the beginning of our conversation, I define son as being the humanity or the manhood of Jesus. So if we have the son praying to the father, we have the manhood or humanity crying out to the spirit that was inside of him not just with him but in him so and he's in, him in so, such a way that so, they were the one so the he's person. so he's praying to the father who's in him is that what you're saying yeah I, exactly why does he lift his eyes to heaven in john 17 1 jesus spoke these words lifted up his eyes to heaven and said father the hour has come, glorify your son, that your son may glorify you. Surely if the... Um, who is the I and who is the you in John seventeen four? I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which that, you have given son. me to do. Isn't that the son praying to the father? Yes, it is. So in the next verse, John seventeen five, he uses the word father. And now, O oh, father, that confirms he's praying to the father. That's the son speaking. And now, O right. oh, father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory I had with you, with his para, before the world was. So before the world was, the son, who you said was the humanity, the son says of himself, he had glory together with the father before the world was a thought can't have any glory a thought cannot create the universe which we read of the sun it, many it, times it, elsewhere it, in the new testament like, I, I beg your pardon it can because it did because that is the meaning of the greek logos it, it there's not one greek scholar <laughs> there's not one greek scholar who says that no one with a phd in greek who says that now there are plenty of people who are not educated who say that but no one with an education i don't have a, a greek education i'm not that that clever i did try new testament greek and i failed i wasn't clever enough to do it but no one in the entire it, history it, of it the christian church says that a john 1 1 logos means a thought or a plan in god's mind logos can have that meaning outside of the bible in other greek contexts yeah if i talk about my thoughts in my mind yeah, I could refer to that in Greek as the, 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 the logos that I'm thinking about, and that would be impersonal. It's not. It's not outside of the Bible. No. Logos, the Greek word logos, means what it means. It means something spoken or the, the divine expression. It, it, yes, it, 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 words have a range of meaning, and logos can mean what you are referring it to but in john 1 1 it doesn't there's not one greek scholar in the entire history of the christian church who says that at john 1 1 logos means a thought or a plan in god's mind now if i'm wrong quote the scholar who says that a scholar is not billy bob from you know it, a scholar is going to be somebody with a phd in greek and you're not addressing john 17 5 and now O oh father glorify me together with yourself with the glory I had with you, with his para, okay, it means besides, para with you before the world was. So the son is saying to the father that he possessed the divine glory of Yahweh together with the father, which he existed alongside before the world was. That's para what John 17, not, 5 says. Para does not in every context mean uh, alongside of, like in in the word uh, parabole, for instance, parable, it is a it is something alongside of something else. Mm -hmm. However, para also can simply and plainly mean with. 
Yes, and that's how it's translated. It doesn't literally mean that you have two separate spirits who are beside each other. Right? It's right, not exactly. saying that. Because God is right. one spirit, and the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are one spirit. But the word para right. is used in John 17, 5 to imply that the Son is not the Father, they are together. They're not physically um, alongside each other in no, a physical no, no, wait, sense. Wait, hold, hold it. Wait, excuse me. Stop the tape here. Uh, para... You cannot conclusively say that para in John seventeen five is used to prove that the father is not. What, what did you say? The father is not the son. How did you say that? Um, God the Father is is not the Son of God. Well, well you know, and and the not. word para is 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 not used here in this context. It does not mean that they are two separate spirits. Who are literally physically alongside each other. Right. Firstly, so, spirits. So can, can, I, can I please? Can I please? Can I please finish? Otherwise, you will misunderstand me. Um, please allow me to finish, so you don't misunderstand me. Um, so, spirits are not physical. So, spirits can't be physically on, alongside each other. But the word para is used here in a metaphorical sense to imply that the son is not the father. He is somehow distinct from the Father. He possesses the glory together with the Father, but he is distinct from the Father. And para is used because it's one of the strongest words in Greek to imply that the Son is not the Father. And yet the Son has glory together with the Father before the world was. So the Son, all I'm saying is the Son has existed together with the Father from before the uh, creation. At, 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 at no point uh, in this discussion tonight have I denied that there is no distinction between the Father and the Son. There is a distinction. But I think the problem that you and I are having is defining what that distinction is. Uh, I say the distinction is one of manifestation, or you might use the word office, uh, you might use the word role, uh, but it's not a distinction in beings. They are not separate beings. Ag ag agreed. Ag ag agreed. Um, I liked, yeah, the Trinity teaches that the one God of the Bible is one being, one essence, one spirit. Not three beings, not three essences, not three spirits. One, one, one. One being, one essence, one substance but that that one God exists personally, distinctly, and eternally as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ is the Son whom the Father sent into the world. Thank that's you, sir. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. I have no problem. Right, but if you don't have a problem with that, in the second part of my definition, I said, I said there's one God who's one being, one substance, one essence. And that one God has existed personally, distinctly, and eternally, I don't think you heard the word eternal, as the Father and as the Son and as the Holy Spirit. If God has eternally existed as the Father, Son and Holy Spirit for all eternity, surely that disagrees with the they, oneness they, doctrine. They have not existed. They have not existed as, as separate They're not separate. The, the Trinity doesn't teach. I've just said, look... Listen to me. I said there's one being, not three beings. There's one being who's one essence, one God, one spirit, one Yahweh, one spirit, one being. Not three beings, one being. Well, let's say you're leaning toward oneness now. No, I'm a Trinitarian. But I'm a Trinitarian who actually knows what the Trinity teaches, which is very, very rare here in the UK, because apart from a couple of um, uh, Anglicans and Methodists that you meet in half-empty churches who've got a degree from Oxford or Cambridge... Um, my background is in the evangelical church. I no longer attend any more. I want nothing to do with it. it. it I'm sorry, but but I it is it is. What what church? I don't go. I've just told. I don't go to any church. I gave up years ago. Um, one of the reasons oh. why I gave up was the doctrine of the Trinity, because in my own background, which was evangelical, many evangelicals were modeless. They taught that Jesus was God the Father. And I got so fed up of hearing that, I wanted nothing more to do with it. Plus, there were lots of scandals. Uh, church leaders. Um, were getting well, together, yeah, I, they I were meeting, I, I and they weren't yeah, playing. No, they, the they church, could I just finish, free. please allow me to finish. Church leaders were not playing Monopoly. They were doing naughty things. 
Naughty things which I can't mention because of a court restraining order. But um, church leaders over me were doing naughty things. They weren't playing Monopoly. They weren't playing Monopoly with each other late at night. Oh, well, yeah, I understand. That happens all the time. Yes, it does happen all the time. But here in the UK, um, it's covered up. It's covered up by other church leaders and also by the police and the courts. Well, As I, I found to my cost. In the US. Pardon? It's the same here in, in the US. I doubt, it's, I doubt it's covered up by the courts. It is covered up by the courts here in the UK. Um, so, do we agree that the Father sent his Son into the world at the Incarnation? Well, if, if I didn't agree with that, I would be taking a side against the Apostle John, who in First John says that that's what happened. Um, 1 John, do you mind if I please read 1 John 4, 9 to 14? Yeah, go ahead. Um, in this the love of God, this is 1 John 4, 9, in this the love of God was manifested towards us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world. I mean, that really is the key verse that we might live through him. In this is yeah. love, not that we love God, but that he has loved us, he loved us, and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Um, then we we'll go down to verse 14. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son as Saviour of the world. So it says in 1 John 4, 9, God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, obviously a reference to the Incarnation. Uh in verse 14, we read the Father has sent the Son as Saviour of the world. So obviously, from these two verses, 1 John 4, 9, God sent his Son into the world. 1 John 4, 4 14, the Father has sent his Son as Saviour of the world. I mean, would you agree with me the Father sent his only begotten Son into the world at the Incarnation? Uh, yes, I have already uh, expressed that. So, therefore, the Son existed as the Son from before the Incarnation. No. The Son did not exist as the Son until he came forth from the womb of the Virgin Mary. A son cannot be a son without a mother, and Mary was his mother. So, how, how do you explain the fact that the Son existed together with the Father, created the universe together with the Father, and existed uh, together it, with the Father as was, the Son from was, before the Incarnation. He was the Logos of God. He did not exist as the Son of God in eternity, I mean. He was the Logos who became flesh through the Virgin Mary. Then, and that is...